Chris Whitney Cooper and I'm chair of the steering group for Gathering Voices. We provide conferences exploring issues of faith for LGBTQA plus people. Our conference this year is intersectionality, which although is topical, is quite a difficult thing to understand. So I'd like to introduce you to one of our contributors, Augustine Tanner M, who's going to explore what intersectionality means to him in this short pre-conference taster session. Augustine will provide some insights and questions to think about, which we will explore more fully in the conference in October. So come and join us. Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. Augustine Tanner. I'm, but you can just call me Gus. My pronouns are he, him, and today we are going to talk about a very interesting subject called intersectionality which is a foundational concept in sociology and many sociological understandings and sub lessons throughout this video, you will learn about what intersectionality is, as well as ways in which it's relevant when analyzing society and also people. Before we begin, I have to say, I have my own biases and privileges. One, I am very well educated. I am come from the United States of, the, of America. And also I am in a position of power and authority. So I come in the lens of the world with these aspects. But before we begin, I want you to write down 10 words to describe yourself. Write down 10 words that describe yourself. You can pause the video if you like. Next, can you sort through these words into those which has advantages to you? Example, being educated, being white, being from an upper, middle class, home, and those who have disadvantages to you. Example, poverty. Are any of these words neutral? When understanding a new concept like intersectionality, I find it helpful to begin with a couple key questions that sort, a, sort of guide us in our journey through something that may feel very unfamiliar. So let our first question be, what is intersectionality in the first place? Then our second question will be, what exactly is intersecting? So when we come to the root word intersectionality, it intersects with what is actually intersecting when it comes to society, people, and sociological understandings. So I also think it might be helpful for us to use an analogy when we're trying to get this basic idea of what intersectionality is. So let's take to the streets and think, think of, well, what happens when two streets cross or come together, well, they come together at an intersection. Often at the intersection, there's a stoplight or a stop sign, but they intersect at the intersection. So let that be our definition of intersectionality. Be the joining of multi, sorry, be the joining of multi, so at least two entities the joining of multi-entities and allow this basic definition to take us into applying it sociologically to intersectionality. All right. So then we say 
what is actually intersecting when it comes to society and people? Well, society is compromised of, of people along with the ideas, what they believe, what is right, and what their social standard is, and ways in which being. So then we say, okay, well, what are people made? What are their identities? What ways do they see the world? Identities is a way of looking through a window of how you see the world. Now, I'm not saying that identities is a monolith, but I'm saying it is one way of seeing the world. Identity is seen as which people define themselves. By our working definition, it is that the condition or character as who a person is. This includes their qualities, their beliefs, and all these things distinguish or identify that individual person. So our identities really drive our senses and self. Our value systems, our perceptions, is how we see the world around us as well as ourselves in relation to the world. So basically, identity is what connects individual to the collective whole of society. And the connection is taking place through a social recognition. You socially recognize, you say, oh, hey, it's like this. That's my identity. That's how I see things. That is the form of your identity. What is actually intersecting in terms of society, what a society is made of, of people looking out into their different windows to see different concepts, to see different identities, to see different things. Intersectionality is about evaluating and analyzing the world. And it can be really, really helpful. French philosopher Louis Atlas said, "Air often a helpful analyst to really understanding the system and the message, giving and receiving the ways that as human beings are actually compelled to do. This French philosopher tries to analyze identities in the way in which we see the world. Intersectionality is putting identities on top of each other and seeing things. For example, as we know about first, second, third wave, and sometimes even say fourth wave feminism, we see that often first, second wave feminism helped women who are mostly white. But it doesn't look at actually a woman who is a woman of color a woman who's a woman of color who is an immigrant, a woman who's a woman of color who's an immigrant who also is a lesbian, a woman who's a woman of color who's an immigrant who is um, uh, a lesbian and also who is disabled. All of these identities connect to each other. And often when we analyze society and analyze what's happening in our world, we have to think about all these aspects. Intersectionality helps us analyze and what is going on in the conditioning of this world. Social conditioning and social standards are giving meaning through social conditioning and we internalize it as we often perceive others and how we function. Gathering voices here as we listen to the different talks that I really hope that you are able to do soon is these intersection of society, often people that we don't often hear. Here's a question. 
Is everyone around you the same? Now, I hope that wherever you are, if you're in a small little island in the middle of the Pacific or you're in bustling London, you would say, of course not. But think of the identities around you and think about the complexities that happens to people and that people aren't a monolith, but everyone is different and diverse in their own way. We have to prioritize and understand privilege that we're given in society. As a Christian, one thing that I have always found really dear to my heart is Philippians chapter 2. If you don't know about Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2 talks about Jesus not grasping equality with God, but emptying himself. Theologians call it the kenosis. Jesus gave up his privilege in order to save the world. In the Hebrew and the Greek scriptures, throughout all of it, Jesus talks about these ideas of identity and identities of privilege. And Jesus gives up his privilege in order to be closer to us. Intersectionality is talking about understanding our own privileges, understanding our own identities, and understanding the complexities of all of society and all of our being. It helps us analyze and understand society. Obviously, these lists are social constructs. And there are debates back and forth about what is intersectionality and how it's helpful. Some people argue that it is not helpful. But I tell you, as my own academic study, as my own life unravels and my time here on earth, I would say intersectionality is beautiful in a way of analyzing and helping others. My vision for myself is helping others become the best version of themselves in Christ. That is my theme. That's what I try to live for, helping others to become the best version of themselves in Christ. And I believe that as Christians or as practitioners of well-being, we are to do the same. We help others to understand that everything is so drastically different and complex. You might be able to talk about sexuality in one way, in one part of the world, but not able to use the same terms and understandings in another part of the world. So social constructs are ever shifting and they're ever moving society. Society so is intersecting and intersectional. Identities and histories allow us to see that there are even larger relationships taking place in order to thoroughly understand one must have to really understand the experience of others. This concept of intersectionality is gaining traction for us to help with well-being, for us to help us be the best practitioners possible and also just really, really good friends. I hope that was just at least a taste of what intersectionality is. From my own experience, I am a black immigrant who has neurodiversity, a part of my life, that I am a queer person, I am a Christian, and all these different aspects of my identity shapes who I am. And often I, I wonder, you know, when I go into a room that you may see me and you may say, he's a black man. And then you may hear me and say, oh, he ain't from here. He's American. Then you might even see the collar that I might be wearing. You goes, Oh, he's a priest. Then if I talk to you a little bit more, you might say, oh, he's queer. 
Then if you see my writing, you might say, oh, he's dyslexic and a little bit dyspraxic. These are all the ways in which I see the world and the windows in which I see. And intersectionality is saying, we are complex beings. We are complex beings that we must understand each other to make a better society. I welcome you to listen to the rest of the talks on the Gathering Voices Conference coming soon.